I was asked some questions about the solar panels that uh, I use to uh, to uh, keep the batteries charged up. They're old 40 waters. We are in the process of refreshing our electrical system aboard. What uh, I thought I'd do is go ahead and do a video on the electrical system refit. I looked at it and it looks like it's going to be <laughs> a multi-part uh, video. I don't want to try to bore you to death with a great big long one covering all the stuff. So I've broken it down into parts and I'm going to go over each part uh, separately in a, in a quick video. I told Jill about this and Jill goes, wait a minute, if we're going to do that, you know, people might take into account what you're saying to do. They might try something and hurt themselves because we're working with electricity and stuff like that. Uh, I certainly don't want anybody to come to any harm, but she said, can't do it without putting a disclaimer up first. So, before I start the video, I'm going to take us uh, on a short trip. Won't take you but a second. And I'm going to go visit Guinevere's legal department for a quick disclaimer. Right over there. The views and opinions expressed in this media or comments on this channel are those of the speaker and do not necessarily reflect or represent the views of any other persons. I, we are not telling anyone what to do. We are allowing the viewer, that's you, to see what we do and in some cases, how and why we do it. Any and all content is created by us. It is believed to be true and correct at the time of recording. It is presented for informational purposes only. Verify and use at your own risk. Now, <laughs> With the disclaimer out of the way, uh, I thought I'd go into uh, some of the things that uh, this first part is going to cover. And that's, I, I hope you don't mind, I made myself some little cheater cards so that I don't forget something. Before you talk about the power system on a boat, uh, the solar panel, you know, I hear everybody talk about solar panels. I hear everybody talk about, oh, we want more batteries. We want bigger batteries. Uh, you got to talk about the system as a whole, not just the solar panels, not just the battery, not just your usage. You've got to, you've got to go through the whole thing. So before you do anything, before you start anywhere, before the first thing about your power system, we advocate lower your usage. A, a penny spent on lowering the usage of power is probably equal to 50 cents spent on generating power that you're going to need and storing power that you're going to need. Now, I'm not telling you go with no power, oil lamps and things like that in this day and age with, uh, with everything that's going on. Uh, you can get by with a whole lot of stuff and be real comfortable with still very low usage. Now, one of the things that, uh, that uh, is easy to do and quick is switch out to LED lights. Now, when I first started getting Guinevere ready to cruise, there was no such thing as LED dome lights. And it, it, actually, just the year before we left <coughs> was the first time I could get an LED flashlight. So lowering your light power usage is, is the first thing I'd look at. The next thing <coughs> is if you haven't already wired your boat, look at the wiring on your boat. A lot of people 
Don't even look at the wire size in the boat. You know, if you look at the charts, it tells you, oh, use this wire size for this run of electrical wire, and you're going to only reduce your power by uh, half a percent or something like that, or some of them go up to 3% usage. Don't forget, that wire run is from the battery up to the circuit panel, from the circuit panel to the device, and from the device all the way back to the battery. Now, my advice is, first off, go bigger. Get a thicker wire than is called for, if you can fit it at all. Because if you go with just the wire size that's recommended, you're throwing some power away that could be used. Go for a refrigeration system that uses the least amount of power possible. Now, when we first started, I went with a unifridge, and that was the lowest power usage I could find. That was still 4 amps when it was running, no matter what. Uh, that finally went by the wayside and I put in an Ingalls unit. The Ingalls unit starts off with about 4 amps, but it ramps itself down so it doesn't use that the entire time it's running. The other thing that you've got to look at is what you're going to be using your power for. Charging equipment, charging your phone, charging your computer, charging your DVD player, charging all of this stuff. That takes power. And as I said, if you're not running a larger size wire, you're throwing away part of it. And then every time you charge something, every time you transfer power from the solar panel to the battery, you're losing power along that wire. Batteries don't use 100% of what you put into them. It's a lower percentage than what you take out of them isn't 100%, depending on how fast you take it out of them. So you're losing more power there. The device that you're using isn't 100% perfect, so it's, use, it's wasting some power. So you can see all of these wastes build up. Your nav equipment, you're going to really need to use it for your nav equipment. Pay attention to what your nav equipment uses for power. If I, I see a lot of people use a computer for navigation. Well, does the computer use less or more than a dedicated chart plotter? Now, also, I'm talking about cruising. I'm not talking about going around the harbor for weekends or one week a year. I'm talking if you're going long term. This all saves power usage. Important. I can't stress it enough. I see a lot of people wire up everything and then they wire fuse by the by the battery they wire a fuse circuit breaker panel and then they wire up their ham single sideband VHF FM radio uh, you know all of these things I advocate in the strongest terms possible not to fuse between the batteries and your radio with the exception of the radio fuse itself. Every radio comes with a fuse block. Yes, that one is used. Now, my takeoff from my battery has a place for a fuse, but what I've done is I went down to the uh, local hardware store and I bought a stainless steel rod that's the same diameter as a fuse and in the fuse area in the engine room, I put that stainless steel rod in there. So I only have one fuse between the battery and the radio. 
when I was in the military, I learned this. Uh, they call it a battle short. You want to. We had actual circuit breakers on the aircraft that were labeled battle, battle short, meaning we're in trouble, we're in a battle, I need to get home. I don't care if I burn something out on the way home. I don't care if I burn out something to get me safely to my next destination. So that's a battle short. And that's what we use for our radios because your VHF FM and your ham or your single sideband, you want them working, you want them putting out all the way until they go underwater. So put a battle short there. Make sure your radios work the whole time. And that's even if you're going around the harbor for the weekend, I'd still do that. Now, the other thing I advocate <laughs> and what saved our marriage, and I, I've got another little uh, video about it, uh, and I'll put a link to it in the, uh, in the description below, is we have a link 10. I think they're no longer made, but they have the equivalent of it. And it's a gauge that we mount that tells you exactly what your battery state is. It tells you if it's charging, it tells you if it's discharging, and it tells you your batteries are 70% full or 20% full or 100% full. You really want to put that gauge in it. Uh, before we got that gauge, everything was based on my by guess and by golly. I'm gonna, going to uh, follow Jill around and turn off lights, and she went crazy. Um, she says, I'm not living in a cave. If I want lights on, I want lights on. By putting that gauge up and it's prominently displayed on our panel, she can see what our batteries are doing easily, and I can see what our batteries are doing easily just by looking up at it helped immensely because you're no longer guessing your battery state. You're no longer having to dip your batteries if you've got wet cells to, to determine the state of charge. It just flat works. Now, the other thing to think about is what we did before we went cruising, before we headed out, was we were in the San Francisco Bay Area and we bought the solar panels we thought we would need. We hooked up a controller, we hooked up the batteries, and then we unplugged from dockside power. And we spent a full week never connected to any external power sources. Worked like a champ. Man, I'm set. We're ready to go cruising. Wrong. <laughs> I based it on what our power usage was at the time in San Francisco. Now, to give you a little hint of what that entailed was, we always drink water at room temperature. So, the only time we opened our refrigerator was to get something out to cook or to put something in when we got back from shopping absolutely worked, worked great. We went out of San Francisco, down the West Coast, everything was working great. A couple of times we were getting a little down there on power, but uh, I had to run the engine anyway to move, or no, no wind, and we had to make uh, our anchorage before dark, so everything was, was fat. We got into the Sea of Cortez, got really warm right around Cabo San Lucas. Coming up into the Sea of Cortez was beautiful. Can't, can't tell you enough how great it was. Anyway, in the Sea of Cortez, we're doing just fine. And then summer comes along, and the out outside temperature bumps up to above 100, and the water temperature is above 95 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> okay. I don't know about you, but even though I drink water at room temperature most everywhere, in the tropics, in that heat, it was impossible to drink water 
at room temperature. It was just killing us. So, I had to put water into the refrigerator to cool it down. Not get it cold, just to take some of that heat off of it. I did some looking online and I printed out some information and you can go do your own investigation but uh, to cool water you're using what's called BTUs, British Thermal Units and a BTU is the amount of cooling that you need to do to reduce the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. Okay, now, I, what's a pound of water? Well, a pound of water is 15.34 ounces, yeah, 1.92 U.S. cups. When we're in the Sea of Cortez, we were using about eight cups each, and that's bare minimum to keep us hydrated in the heat, in the sun, even swimming, and all the rest of that. We're still using about eight cups of water apiece. Uh, if you see our videos, you can see us drinking out of colored water bottles so that we can keep track of the amount. Now, eight cups of water is to drop it from 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the outside air temperature, and even the temperature inside, from 95 degrees or so down to 75 degrees. In one hour, that requires 166.88 watts of electrical power to generate the BTUs to drop that down. Now remember what I said about the wiring that goes there, the refrigerator is taking in watts but a hundred percent of that doesn't get to a BTU. You know, I'm not sure what the percentage is, it might be 90 if you're lucky. So a hundred and say 70 watts of power from a solar panel for one hour goes to nothing but lowering the drinking water from 75 or from 95 degrees to 75 degrees. So when you start basing what you're going to need for power, base it on what you are going to need in some of the destinations you go to. If you've got enough to drink that water in 100 degree outside temperature and get it low enough to drink comfortably, then when the temperature is not 100 degrees, you're going to be fat on power. I'm not even talking about using the power for the water maker, our 12 volt water maker. At times we were able to make water using nothing but solar. A little experiment we did, we took a four-day off-the-boat trip up the Baja. During that time, we didn't open the refrigerator. When we come back to the boat, our batteries were charged full, just as they had been when we were in the Bay Area. It was opening that refrigerator in 100 degree temperature to bring water temperature down to drinkable. To, to get things in and out that was actually using the power. So keep that in mind. The best thing you can do is to lower your usage or at least gauge it to what it's going to be when you get to the area you want to cruise in. Now I'm sure I'm running a long time on this video so next video let I'll talk about how we store electric on the boat.